right there from January 6th. You can see the fall knot right there on uh, this uh, gentleman's chest. Uh, Mr. Daniel, yes or no, or no, are you aware that your advertising department uses imagery affiliated with white supremacist movements in its marketing materials? Yes, you've heard that right. Uh, symbols associated with white supremacists are apparently showing up in ads for gun manufacturers. And that was the topic of discussion during a House Oversight Committee hearing on gun violence, mass shootings, and the type of advertisements that are used by gun manufacturers to lure in some of these buyers. Now, the hearing included testimony from Daniel Defense CEO Marty Daniel and also Ruger CEO Christopher Killoy. And in this next clip, AOC decided to specifically confront the CEO of Daniel Defense about the type of symbols used in their advertising. Let's watch. So this is uh, in, this is featured prominently in your advertisement, that tattoo. You've indicated that you don't know what it is, but Ms. Sampson, uh, as an expert in this uh, area, can you briefly tell us uh, what that tattoo is? That's a fall knot, and it's a symbol that has been increasingly embraced by white supremacists. So, uh, Mr. Daniel, you may or may not know, but your company's advertisement uh, prominently displays iconography uh, associated with white supremacist movements. Uh, I'd also, you can also find it in this other photo that I will be pu pulling up right now. Uh, right there from January 6th, you can see the fall knot right there on uh, this uh, gentleman's chest. Uh, Mr. Daniel, yes or no, or no, are you aware that your advertising department uses imagery affiliated with white supremacist movements in its marketing materials? No, ma'am. Okay, think no, we reclaiming do that. my time. Thank you. So, Look, there are a lot of issues, even if you're skeptical of the claim that these types of symbols are prominently featured in the ads by these gun manufacturers. There are other advertising you know, methods or tactics used by these manufacturers that tend to attract or target certain individuals who probably shouldn't have guns. So for instance, making guns more appealing to a far younger demographic, potentially, you know, kids who probably shouldn't want guns or have guns. We've seen examples of that. Or, you know, these pink handguns to attract women and female buyers. And just to go back to the Volnot that was mentioned by AOC in those clips, well, it's not of the slain. Um, it's an old Norse symbol that often represented the afterlife in carvings and designs. It's often considered a symbol of the Norse god of Odin. Uh, some white supremacists, particularly racist Odinists, have uh, appropriated the symbol to use as a racist symbol. Often they use it as a sign that they are willing to give their life to Odin, uh, generally in battle. So uh, fun stuff. Losers, Great. losers. <laughs> Like, just go to Comic Con. I mean, I, I just stop with this cosplay. It's so ridiculous. But um, they're always trying to find some like mythological reason that the whites are the best. And and here, let me put on my costume, and I feel like a big man. But she also in that hearing, I'm not sure if you have the clip, but uh, pointed out that that same gun manufacturer, I believe, was selling weapons with the floral print that the Boogaloo boys wear as a symbol of you know, their fealty to one another. Hey, let's all wear flowers and we'll be a white supremacist group together. Yippee, again, the amount of dress up that is involved with these white supremacists will never never fails to, to amuse me. Um, but it just goes to show these companies, these corporations manufacturing these guns, you know they have market research in house of that course. says <laughs> this is your key demo. These are all intersectional issues. All of the people that want to, and I'm sure me even using that term would trigger these very people, but uh, the, the, all of these uh, people who want to dress up and, and pretend and be a, a big man and be a white supremacist who kicks down at other groups. They also want to feel empowered 
by buying something as a consumer as an extension of their genitalia. So they feel like big men in a society that is not necessarily entirely geared toward them at this point. Oh No, they see a black couple in an ad, that's an affront towards me. Let me go buy a gun so I can feel powerful in the world that doesn't make sense to me anymore. So these gun manufacturers know exactly what they're doing. And I think she did an excellent job of highlighting those points um, because that's the reality. They're complicit in the fact that uh, these mass shootings are disproportionately done by right-wing extremists. They understand that this is their key demo and that's why targeting the manufacturing of these weapons is the way to go with gun control. Not empowering law enforcement with more background check ability or more red flag law ability because we already know law enforcement's discretion is very questionable. Target the manufacturing and sale of these, get them out of circulation. That's the only way to actually change things in this area. Right, and I know that there are, you know, there might be differences on where we stand on gun control. I'm sure we agree on most of it, but I'm of the mind that, you know, I think law-abiding, responsible adults should be able to purchase certain guns, right? I think certain assault weapons, more importantly, high capacity magazines are an issue and we should look at it. But I'm not in the camp of we should ban guns, we should do away with the second amendment. I think that there are plenty of people in this country who are responsible gun owners for whatever reason, whether it's for self defense and they keep it in their own home and you know some sort of safe or lock box, or it's a hobby of theirs. They like to go hunting in their rural community. I don't wanna take that away from people. But the problem that I have overall when it comes to the advertising that I've seen from gun manufacturers, and this is separate from the appeal to white supremacists, which is an even worse issue if you ask me, is just like this effort to provide cover or just kind of like help people forget the fact that we're dealing with a lethal weapon here, right? It's not a toy. So even if you were to take what gun manufacturers and their you know advertisements have to say at face value. Oh, the floral design has nothing to do with the Boogaloo Boys. We swear. Okay, why does a gun, a legal, a lethal weapon, um, get like a floral print? It's not a yeah. 1950s vintage dress. It's a freaking <laughs> gun. You know what I'm saying? Like it just it doesn't, and it it sends this message that it's totally fine to not be responsible with your gun, right? How many? people just willy nilly leave their gun out within reach of their own children. I mean, how many people forget the fact that they're dealing with a legal a lethal weapon and they co-sign on their son, like the Uvalde shooter being able to purchase certain guns. Like it's a, it's a huge problem in terms of messing with the way people perceive guns and their and how lethal they, they are. Um, now I want to get back to the hearing because there's more to get to. Now Daniel, who's the uh, CEO of one of these gun manufacturers, said he was not aware of the iconography and that he did not directly participate in the advertising. He's just the CEO. <laughs> I mean, he's just the CEO, but he he has he has no idea what they're doing with their advertising. I mean, that's yeah, that's the hardworking CEO that you know just has no idea what they're putting in their ads, uh, kicking it down to uh, his subordinates. Pure God. conservatism per usual. Exactly. He decried the recent wave of massacres across America, but said they were a local problem that should be addressed locally. Okay, we don't live on an island. If you're in a particular state, you don't have closed borders with the rest of the country. So the idea that this is a local problem is laughable to say the least. But we're talking about people who have a massive profit motive here, right? So. That's worth discussing as well. That's something that AOC um, focused on and addressed a little bit. So uh, let's get right to that. So let's talk about what the profits have been for these two gun manufacturers in particular. Daniel Defense, the manufacturer of the AR-15 style rifle that the Uvalde gunmen used to kill 19 children and two teachers, offers its firearms for sale through a buy now, pay later financing system advertised on its website. The company's revenue from AR-15 style rifles tripled. It tripled from 2019 to last year from just a mere $4 million to $120 million. 
Meanwhile, Ruger's gross earnings from the same style rifles nearly tripled from 2019 to 2021, from 39 million to over 103 million. Ruger's rifles and pistols were used by mass shooters in Sutherland Springs, Texas in 2017 and Boulder, Colorado in 2021. And AOC wanted to draw attention to the correlation between record gun profits and the increase of these massacres across the country. Let's watch. In 2020, again, more than 45,000 Americans died by gunfire, reflecting an almost threefold increase from 2015. Are those statistics correct? That's accurate. So in your view, are you seeing a correlation between gun profits and gun deaths in the United States? Yes. This is about blood money. Between 2019 and 2021, two years, leading gun manufacturer Sturm and Ruger saw gross profits double to almost $280 million. In fact, during an earnings call, their CEO called the sales boom, quote, historic, ferocious, and that the future was bright. A month after that, an AR-556 pistol murdered 10 people at a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado. Now, I share that with you because it, it always goes back to what I think the best analysis is in regard to where we are in this country and why we are where we are. It's not because people are good or people are bad. The profits matter. Corporations, capitalism indicates you got to maximize your profit. You have a fiduciary responsibility to your shareholders to return on whatever investment they made in your company, right? To return a profit to them. That is their fiduciary responsibility. So when you have a system with lawmakers who get legalized bribes from these corporations who have a fiduciary responsibility to maximize profits, those profits will always take priority over human lives. Do a systemic analysis of why we're experiencing what we're experiencing. I think too much of the analysis just focuses on, oh, well, Manchin's a bad guy or gun manufacturers are bad people. And look, that might be true. But whether or not they're good or bad is really irrelevant when you take a step back and you see how this system is set up and how the system incentivizes profits over human lives. Yeah, it's it's a fast it's a facile analysis when it's only focused on individual actors and even guns in general. Now, um, look, I might differ from uh, I think on the left there's a broad spectrum of how people want to approach gun control. I do mm -hmm. think that there is a troubling managerial liberal impulse from the coast when it comes to gun control. There's a reason that Michael Bloomberg is this is his only issue, right? This is yeah, the right. only. This is the only corporate greed that he feels emboldened to actually challenge. And there are a lot of types like him as well, where overall, this is a problem of profits being unrestrained, unfettered capitalism. Because when you hear good guys with a gun and that kind of rhetoric, that's because they want more people to buy their weapons. It yep. is a problem of unfettered capitalism. and. There are deadly results when it comes to climate change on that front. And there are deadly results when it comes to the flood of weaponry on that front. But the latter is one that can be exploited in terms of fear. So when people are constantly fearful that they're gonna get gunned down, it increases the purchase of these weaponry as has been borne out yep. in those statistics. And so they are exploiting people's fears to that degree. There's. It's interesting too, by the way, that AOC is on the oversight committee. I'm always reminded when she's in these hearings because I think Pelosi placed her there because she'll be the attack dog for gun manufacturers or Republicans in oversight. But keep her off the energy committee, keep her off of the financial committees naturally where it might be a little bit more substantive. But regardless, this is still does have value. There are three things that we could do that I think are great common sense gun reforms. One, we have to target the manufacturing of these weapons of war. They should not be on our streets. Other weapons, you get a license, you can own it. I believe in that. But mm -hmm. you also, also, we need to do a lucrative gun buyback program because there are just too many out there. It doesn't yep. need to be mandatory. Does not, and I don't think it could be mandatory in this country. But you make it lucrative, three times the the price of the gun. 
you, the government can buy it back from you. Um, and, and then thirdly, as I mentioned, licensure. You have if you can uh, need, need more steps to buy, drive a car, to become a hairstylist, all of these things, then to buy a weapon, that is a problem in this country. And then I think we can actually get serious about gun control. But yep. you know, as always, I'm appreciative of, of her well-researched attacks on that, on that committee. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.